<laughs> Isolation, despair, and fear. These are just some of the themes explored in what is regarded as the saddest, most emotional, and darkest Zelda. Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask isn't just a game with a gimmick, a time loop. It's not about collecting cool masks. It's not about getting the chance to play as a Deku, Goron, or Zora. It's not even about defeating Skull Kid, stopping the moon, and saving Termina. It's about much more than that. It's an extended metaphor, and one that we'll explore shortly. We cannot discuss Majora's Mask without mentioning its central mechanic, the three-day time loop as well as its likely inspiration, the movie Groundhog Day. I'm sorry, what was that again? I'm a god. You're a god. Bill Murray plays Phil Connors, a self-centered guy forced into living the same day over and over again. What if there were no tomorrow? No tomorrow. That would mean there would be no consequences, there would be no hangovers, we could do whatever we wanted! Ah! After exploiting citizens, stealing money, and committing suicide, he realizes that he has the power to greatly know and help those around him. Groundhog Day is one of the few films to realize the time loop, and Majora's Mask is the only video game to bring the idea to complete fruition in an interactive experience. It's initially frustrating knowing that no matter what you do in three days' time, most everything goes back to the way it is. You play your ocarina, and just like that, you are back to the morning of day one. The moon is back in the highest part of the sky, slowly descending, and everyone else in Termina doesn't know you. You are alone. Personally, I first hated Majora's Mask. Why on earth would you make a game where you have to start all over and over and over again? I felt very alone and alienated. Nobody really knew who I was. After the time loop cycled back, I was just some green-clothed stranger again. It made me feel indifferent. No worse than indifferent, I just didn't care about anything in the game. That's the real curse. It's not the time loop, but your subsequent feelings and attitude from it. But there was a time in the game when I realized that I know everybody in and out of Terminal. I know who they are, what their personalities are like, and what they will be doing at each minute of the day. So what does one do with such power? If you knew something bad was going to happen, would you prevent it? If you had all the knowledge in the world, would you use it for good? Where Groundhog Day has a man repeating a relatively regular day in a small town, Majora's Mass takes place three days before the possible annihilation of Clock Town, creating a much more foreboding atmosphere filled with fear and despair. And it is here in Termina, where Link's title as the Hero of Time is truly tested and realized. The time frame does several things that place Majora's Mask storytelling a nick above other entries into the franchise. It affects the pacing and creates a real sense of urgency throughout Link's journey. You have a limited amount of time to experience and accomplish as much as you can before time runs out. You're constantly aware of the passage of time. The moon draws closer, 
The clock tower ticks away, and the music grows more and more foreboding as the days pass. You encounter people at their most vulnerable, either struggling to make the most of their final days, preparing for a festival that may never happen, or else suffering and in despair. Everyone knows that they're probably not going to make it out of this alive, but it is in these moments that you are given the chance to form personal bonds with these characters, characters with names, schedules, and their own small stories to tell, which makes it all the more painful to watch as they all face their hardships again and again. No matter how many times you try to help those in need, their problems just keep coming back. They're beyond help, and beyond the reach of a hero. Unless you can break the cycle, they're doomed to suffer eternally. Ultimately, as the player, you may even consider ignoring everyone and heading straight for the main goal of defeating Majora. But it's hard to ignore the people when you know you have the power to help them, however briefly. Feeding a helpless Goron or giving a soldier the eternal rest he deserves. It's about helping people even though it's ultimately useless. Offering them a glimmer of hope is what matters. Behind all this suffering is one of Zelda's more interesting antagonists, Skull Kid and his stolen mask. Skull Kid is the same imp whom you befriend in the Lost Woods in Ocarina of Time. Some time ago, he befriended the four giants of Termina. When the giants left Skull Kid to go to the four corners of the land, he was deeply saddened and lonely, for they were his only friends. He returned to the Lost Woods and hung out for a while. He kept to himself in a grotto where few traveled. This is where the events of Ocarina of Time pick up. Skull Kid then returns at some point to Termina. He befriends Tattle and Tail, the sibling fairies, travels back to the Lost Woods, and steals the mask. So why does he steal Majora's mask? Is it pure mischief? Or is he motivated by something? The way I see it, Skull Kid is motivated by what is a recurring theme throughout Majora's Mask. Fear. Majora's Mask teaches us that our fears have effects on others, they have effects on us. Skull Kid is most afraid of being alone and friendless, and when you're afraid, you can easily be manipulated. This is why Majora's Mask attracts Skull Kid. Unlike Ganon, who destroys people physically, the Mask plays on people's fears and wears them down psychologically. Skull Kid becomes the perfect vehicle for mischief and villainy. The Mask is fueled by the fears of the wearer, and its effects branch out everywhere. Skull Kid meets the butler's son and turns him into a tree. What's the worst fear of any father, losing a child? Skull Kid meets Cafe and turns him into a young, awkward boy. What's the worst fear of a lover, never uniting with his love? Skull Kid causes panic in Termina by pulling the moon down. What's the worst fear of a mayor, not having the political know-how to save a city's situation? Skull Kid meets you and turns you into a Deku scrub. What's the worst fear of a hero? being helpless and weak. This evil manipulation continues throughout the game in many more instances, culminating in the final act. Majora's Mask makes its last attempt to manipulate you, the hero. He plays on all the hero's fears. What is the right thing? Does it really make everyone happy? Does it make you happy to make others happy? Do your friends think of you as a friend? What is your real face, the face behind the mask? Is that your real face? These questions, asked by the four children in the meadow, are not philosophical, but antagonistic. Majora's Mask's goal is to make you second-guess your own worth and effectiveness as a hero. It plants the seeds of doubt, trying to pull at your heartstrings in an uncomfortable way. It knows you care deeply for those you try day after repetitive day to help, and it knows you fear you did not do all you could for them. It makes one last attempt to confuse your morality, making you play the bad guy in the final fight. 
What's the worst fear of a hero than realizing he may not have been doing good after all? This makes Majora one of the most dynamically built up final boss fights, because you also can't forget all of the bonds you've formed over the game. They serve as the greatest motivation to fight Majora. You really have the whole world behind you on this one. I say that Majora's Mask is a deep game, because underlying all of the masks, characters, and quests are the deep questions of real life. What would you do differently if you could relive one moment? Are things in life worth regretting? Questions like these can be answered if one lives in the time loop. Having the special knowledge of things to happen and things to come, you gain an appreciation for consequences. You know what's going to happen if you don't stop Sakan from robbing the old woman. You know what's going to happen if you don't stop the aliens at Romani or the thieves on the road to Termina. You know what's going to happen if you don't listen to a troubled heart or teach sisters to dance. You can see the difference a little kindness makes and come to realize that the small things in life do matter. Mm -hmm.